Hey dudes and chicks and neither of those girls don't apply to you. Welcome to Big For Last Time. My name is Katie. Today, I am going to be popping this palette's cherry. This is the Arrow Inspired palette by Adept Cosmetics. The color story looks like this. I fucking love it that this palette actually doesn't have a name. It's not the Arrow palette. It's not the Inspired palette. It's the Arrow Inspired palette that doesn't have a name. So anyways, I think that's fantastic. If we could just take a moment to like give this a little spin. Take her for a spin. See if we can see the shifts. And you can. <laughs> look at that. Here, I'm just going to point to. I'm just going to point and then you guys can look at it. There it is, green. There it goes to pink. And you're going to really see the pink right here. Boom. My friend Tanya actually helped me buy this palette. Um, I was substantially short, and I don't know if you guys remember, but the palette actually launched on the same day as the Lure palette, I'm pretty sure. It was an accidental launch, actually. It was supposed to come out two days later, and she texted me, which she often does to save my fucking ass, and she texted me and was like, hey, dude, they accidentally launched the Adept, and I was like, dude, I don't have the money for that. I, I saved my money for this other launch, and I'm pretty sure it was the Lure launch, but they accidentally launched this, and I was like, dude, it's going to be sold out. And I had like, like a small amount of money. And so she actually, T Tanya sent me the rest of it. So Tanya, thank you so much for making sure that I had this to feature on my channel. You're the fucking shit. Honestly, I feel like you're kind of my manager in a way. If it wasn't for you, I'm not even sure I would be up and running. So thank you so much for always being the unsung hero on this fucking channel. You're the best. So yeah, any hoosies, if you guys are interested in hearing oh it's 11 11 oh i actually talked a lot about i talk about luck in this so it's kind of a get ready with me i also do my this is my saint patty's day look and i talk about luck and my feelings on luck and it's actually pretty interesting i also talk a lot about being three days before my period so if you guys are interested in hearing what i have to say about what it's like for katie Sorensen three days before her period or hearing what i have to say about lady luck or if you're curious to see how i got this look or if you're interested in hearing my final thoughts on the palette or if you just like to watch then hang out Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I fucking really like my eyebrows today. I had somebody ask me in the comments yesterday if I ever do, if I always do dark to light, and I told her sometimes I don't do dark to light, and so today I'm actually going to do light to dark. I'm not gonna do lightest to dark, but I'm gonna actually like kind of do like an example of what I do when I use like the mid-tone color before the deepest color. So I'm gonna go into the color Martin Summers and I'm gonna use that in my crease, above my crease, every fucking where. I'm just gonna, this is gonna be like all over the place. So as you guys know, these colors, yellow greens, yellows, fluorescent greens, neon yellows are notoriously difficult. And I'm just going to tell you right now, this is already not being like super pigmented. I'm not like blown away by how this just laid down. So I want to do a, I'm going to, I'm actually doing this first impression as my as my St. Patrick's Day look. So I love St. Patrick's Day. I honestly, I like any holiday that is like, well, two requirements, if it meets two requirements. If there's no fucking pressure, and if it's just a holiday for dressing up, like if you can just like dress up in a theme, and like nobody's like trying to like make you feel obligated or guilty, then I like that holiday. I'm just going to talk a little bit about what it's like to be in recovery on St. Patrick's Day. So like 
when you're in recovery, like, there's a lot of people who are in recovery who aren't fucking like this. There are people all over the world who get clean from drugs and alcohol and they don't have to do what I have had to do to get clean. So that's them, that's not me. I'm gonna use the Made by Mitchell ME1 and I'm gonna go into the color Cyrus Vanch and I'm gonna use that to blend this out. Oh my goodness. See that like rising up like smoke from the ashes? Oh, okay. I like this color. I'm just going 50% on and 50% off. Now, everybody in the world doesn't have to recover the way I have had to recover, but when you're in re the kind of recovery that I'm in, it's like every single thing you do is about recovery. Like everything's about like spiritual and <laughs> fucking solution oriented and like epiphanies all the time. Like that's the kind of recovery that I'm in. Like I'm constantly, growing and you have to analyze every fucking move you make and so I I think a lot about like spirituality and that kind of shit I don't know lately there's just something about this scene right here that just gets me hot like I just like it when there's like kick up all over the fucking place I don't know why I just like it so any hoosies, I think about spirituality a lot and like I go to NA meetings and there's these readings and NA meetings called the Just For Today and it's like we do all these readings and we chant around and it's fucking definitely a cult. There's this reading called the Just For Today and one of them is about how like when we were using we thought that we were lucky we thought that the reason why we made it through all the things that we made it through without dying was because we were lucky, that we were just lucky. But like in recovery, we've come to learn that a power greater than ourselves was there protecting us and that we were always like, we knew that it was like our higher power was protecting us. And I've never really liked that reading and I'm going to tell you why. When I was in treatment, the last treatment I went to, it was horrible. The treatment I went to was so fucking horrible. God, it was terrible. We did this group that was called, it was like anger management and co-occurring or some shit like that, where co-occurring is when you have mental health issues and drug addiction. But over time, you come to find out that they're all so, they're all so intertwined. Anyways, I'm not, I'm not going to give you a big fucking long spiel about addiction and the difference between mental illness and addiction when there isn't one per se. There is a difference between mental illness if you don't have addiction, but there isn't a difference between mental illness and addiction and trauma and trauma triggers if you have addiction. It's all kind of runs together. It's all just like a trauma response, right? Anyways, unless you don't have trauma, then if you don't have trauma, then drug addiction isn't a trauma response. <laughs> So if it is, it is. And if it isn't, it isn't. Anyway. Okay. So I was in, I had this uh, counselor in that, in that group. And I don't even remember what her name was, but she was like this little pixie. Like she was like an Irish pixie. Like she was actually like an Irish, like leprechaun fairy pixie. And her voice was so soft and she would always talk like this and she was just amazing and she told this story about how one time when she was a little girl she found this four-leaf clover and she just knew that she was lucky she always knew she was lucky and and when i was in treatment i was like bitch but i've always been pretty lucky too like i've had a lot of hard knocks but i've always felt pretty lucky and so when she said that, ever since I got out of treatment, I have thought, I just want to, I just want to believe that I'm lucky. And so, like, when I hear that reading, that's like, we know we weren't lucky. We know we were, we were like, you know, that that was our higher power. We knew it was more than luck. But I don't really love that. I just like thinking that I'm lucky. And so, like... I am lucky. Okay, I'm gonna use my Made by Mitchell ME2, which is like the luckiest brush. And I'm gonna go into the color Edward Rasmus. Now this is where I would use a lighter color first and then the darker color. And this brush is fucking excellent for adding darker colors into the outer V and adding dimension in a way that's like super soft. Now, the reason why I wouldn't use a darker color last is because I don't want to... 
I don't want to take away from the shade. Like this is a really tealy blue and so I don't want to take away the, the blueness of this color by putting it over the top of this. But in this case, I kind of want to keep this color a little greener, like more St. Patty's Day, right? So I'm going to put it like lightly sweeping over the top. Like if it gets blued out, I don't really give a fuck, but I don't mind if I'm like washing out the pigment or not. I don't want to uh, mute it out or like w get it watered down with that color, but like I don't mind it in this case because I think it's going to look good either way. And it actually looks pretty Kelly right now, which I don't really care for Kelly Green. I I'm not trying to be offensive because I know there's people that are into being Irish and they love it and they're people that I fucking love. Like, I love these people. I love that they're Irish. I fucking support them. I support Kelly Green. I just don't really care for it on me, right? I'm just staying in the inner crease with this deeper color and I'm just like adding dimension here. So this is a scenario where I would add the deepest color last because I don't, I want it to be just a wash of that deeper color and not actually. The other thing about it is when you add the deepest color last, it's really easy to blend because all that powder is already on there. So you're not going to get like skirt, skirt, skirt from the stickiness of your primer. So if you add a light wash of any powder, even translucent powder, that's like an old school trick to keep from, to have your blend up to the brow bone really nice but I just don't care about that anymore. So I'm just really with a really light hand blending this up and keeping it because we want it to look like perfection. See how it's literally just the shadow now. It's just like a shadow. It's just a deepening shade. It's just adding dimension. It's not like an actual opaque wash of this color. Like normally, I want this color on my on my lid. Like that's what I want. And so like I use this color directly and then blend it out on the edges because this is the color I want on my lid, right? So when I don't want this color, when I just want like a wash, then I use the lighter shade first. And I'm not sure. I think I, I'm not exactly sure what the girl's name is. I feel like her, the last name starts with a Z, like Zaders, and it reminds me of Invader Zim. That's why I, oh my god, the other day I was at a fucking NA convention, like a huge NA convention, which actually wasn't as huge as it used to be. There was a kid at this convention watching Invader Zim on his fucking iPad, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Oh my God, that's adorable. I don't have that color exactly. Like I just want a wash of that color, a light wash. I guess I just want, I like to talk about, I, I just like thinking that I'm lucky. I, I feel lucky a lot. I feel like a lot of really good things happen to me that I don't really ask for and it's not like gratitude. I know it's my higher power, but like I just like the idea of being lucky. So fuck it. And I'm gonna use my P. Louise cut crease brush with my next glitter primer on Deadpool 2 and that chick's like, he's like, what's your superpower? And she's like, I'm lucky. And he's like, that's not a superpower. And she's like, yes, it is. And he's like, no, it isn't. And she's like, yes, it is. And then they're like, it's not, we're done. And she's like, okay. It is, bye. Like, and then like the whole time she's the only one that makes it, the lucky one. And quite frankly, I feel like I'm actually that lucky. Like, I feel like lucky shit happens to me all the fucking time. Oh my God, you know what? I didn't fucking pick a color. I didn't pick the color that I'm gonna use, shit. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, yeah, I mean, these are so shifty, but I'm gonna try to use the greenest colors. I'm gonna use my Jessup 234. I'm gonna use Monte Cora on the top. Ooh. Yeah. Because 
I'm going to use that other color in my inner corner that's going to be like bright yellowy green. I'm going to go into Nelson Ravitch with the other side of this brush and I'm going to use that across my lid. These shadows are like just pick up on here like crazy. And back into that topest color. Tap, tap, tap. Back into the darkest color. I'm gonna use my Voldemort Fee JH39 and I'm gonna go into that deepest color on the lower lash line. I really want this to be deep so I wanted to go in with just this color so that I really get the depth. And then into the yellow. I thought that these were gonna shift like much more on the lid. I'm gonna use my UC Unearthly, uh, Unearthly UC86 and I'm gonna go into Frank Bertinelli, crossed out. That means he's been fucking dealt with. Yeah, I'm glad I saved this one for the inner corner. It's not my favorite look that I've ever done, but it'll probably do. I'm gonna kind of go like this and see if this doesn't make this. Honestly, I don't understand why I'm so like not impressed with this. Maybe it's cause I'm about to start my period. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna go finish the rest of my face and I'll be back when I'm done. So this is the manifesto, the pièce de résistance. I don't know what lashes I am wearing. I just like them. I found them. I, they were unlabeled and new at a certain point. Anyways, I just like the way they look. Then I used my Ritual Defeat highlighter in the Chimera, my Arthurine blush palette in Goji, and then I used my LA Girl Neon Shockwave in Gotcha. And it didn't work at first, and I, I just actually recently saw uh, Nett declutter this because she said it was such shit. And I actually sharpened it, broke it, sharpened it again, and then, and then it worked after that. So this used to be my favorite green, and it was way better than the ColourPop green. And today it didn't work that well for me, and then I had to sharpen it all off and then all the way down. So it was like four bucks or something, five bucks. So like, you can't fucking beat that. I'll sharpen it all the fucking way down for that price. I got it like three years ago, maybe even more. And then I used Moss in the new, the new, new, the new Unearthly lip glosses. I seriously love these glosses. So anyways, oh, my thoughts on the palette. I literally think it's just because I'm about to start my period because I actually don't like my fucking hair today. I don't like this look very much. I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but I will say for the colors that I use, these colors are usually pretty easy. Um, I didn't have a difficult time blending them, but kind of. 
for what they are. So I usually take, my camera will only go for 29 minutes. And normally, like, I can get my look done in 29 minutes. Now that I've been doing both eyes while filming, that has gone over pretty consistently, at least a minute or two. But I've also done looks that I did in, in the 29 minutes with both eyes. So I didn't do that with this. They felt a little hard to blend out for the colors that they are. Not not difficult by any stretch, but just not super fucking, not like buttery ease either. Like they didn't just go in like butter. She didn't just spread her legs for me and fucking blend like a fucking dream. That's not what happened. So anyways, um, I'm probably just being a bitch. Who can know? Let's see if I can get any shift. Cause I honestly, I mean, to be fair, to be fair, I did only, I did want the greenest of greens. So I feel like I got that. It looks, I, I don't know. There's just something about it that I don't think looks very good. Maybe it's the colors. Kelly green isn't my color. So anyways, you guys let me know if I'm wrong. Please tell me in the comments how great I look and how pretty I am and how I'm totally wrong about my hair and the look that I look so fucking pretty, okay? No, I'm just totally kidding. <laughs> Please just don't fucking tell me you're about to fucking start your period. Quit being a bitch. Don't fucking tell me that. Um, I got <laughs> I got people to do that. So anyways, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell because you can't wait to see what happens next. Hit the like button if you like this look or if you just like my sparkling personality and my boy's charm. And hang out with me in the comments because I fucking love it. If you got like halfway through this video and you were like, oh my god, that girl is so pretty until she opens her big fucking mouth, then go check me out on Instagram. I don't talk as much on Instagram. And if you were like, don't sugarcoat it, Katie, why don't you tell us how you really feel? Then go check out my Patreon. I don't hold anything back there. And I go live most Fridays at 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time because um, I live in the mountains. Thank you guys so much for watching. You could have been anywhere, but you were here wasting your time with me, and I totally appreciate you. Later. Slayer!